Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live daily photo show on the YouTubes every weekday, 9.30 a.m. Pacific. If you're not watching live, you could be and you should be. Tune in because it's a lot of fun. You get to chat. I get to respond. It's kind of fun. So today's show is about editing footage from one of these on one of these. I went on a sunrise hike. So pre-dawn, very dark hike up to this place called Table Rock. And uh, unfortunately, the sun never came up. It was one of those, like, it finally came up on Monday or Tuesday at some point. But so I didn't get the whole dynamic range, super beautiful sunrise thing that I was hoping to get, but it turned into an interesting low light, real world scenario, low light video with the GH5 edited primarily on this, but then finish in Final Cut. And that's what we're going to talk about a bit. Um, anyway, so I did, I wanted to do the edit on Sunday when I was at home and I thought, you know, I'm going to play with doing this on the iPad. Can the iPad handle the 4K 60p footage out of this thing, which is what I shot. So I've got this handy dandy little, what do you call this thing? SD card lightning reader. If you're using an iPad Pro and you have this reader, the new generation of this reader, you get USB 3 performance off of it. If you use the older reader, you get USB 2. If you use the new reader on a non iPad Pro, you get USB 2, but you put these two together and you, you get USB 3 speeds, which is tremendously fast, really fast, right? 4K 60p on this camera shot in manual exposure. I set it to 180 degree shutter and I was shooting with this lens, the 12 to 35 f2.8. This is the, the Mark one. I. I don't have one of the new ones. And then I put the ISO in auto. And this is one of the cool new features of the GH5 is that you can do auto ISO when in manual mode, which really opens things up a little bit. If you're not concerned too much about a specific ISO because of noise performance or anything like that, you can choose your aperture and your shutter speed or shutter angle and just shoot and let the camera go up and down on the ISO as needed. I think that is a fantastic feature. And so that's how I shot this thing. Now, the video started in pitch black. So it was absolutely maxed out at 12,800 ISO. That's the max, by the way. And uh, you can set in the auto settings on the camera, you can set where you want it to max. If you only want it to go as high as 800 or 16 or whatever, you can set that, which is pretty slick. But I set it 12,800, go to town. The vast majority of the footage is that super low, super high ISO, um, super low light, quite grainy, but as you'll see, very, very livable. So anyway, so I imported with this thing. I wanted to see, can the iPad handle it? And you know what? <laughs> It can. I was like, are you kidding me? 4K 60p editing on my stupid iPad. It's remarkable. This thing is so stinking powerful. So I started editing in iMovie. So let's take a quick look at iMovie in here. We shot a little bit indoors to begin with. Um, I shot a little bit indoors to begin with just making of the coffee. And then it goes into some outdoor stuff. So let me just play through a few seconds of this. Here we go. We are, for some godforsaken reason, up at the crack of a sparrow's fart. We're, we're, we're going to Table Rock. We're going to Table Rock. We are going which to is like an hour yeah. and something away. So we got yeah, a, a ways to wait. 37 minutes away. 30, really? That's it? The way I try. I should do this more often. 30, you know 37 minutes, not 36. It's like Bo, we're leaving at 5.36 a.m. Sam. Just saying. It's very dark in here. All right, so there's just a little teaser of that. And you saw, once I got out of the kitchen and making the coffee, we're in the dark. And you'll see, I mean, clearly there's some noise in those images, no doubt about it, but it's livable. I'm totally pleased with it. So let me go back into the editing mode on here. And I wanna show you some of the things you can do in iMovie. And I'm gonna talk about why, what I found is an alternative to iMovie, because um, it got a lot better. There's something way better out there, which I only just discovered. You go into iMovie, create a new project, start importing clips. Easy, easy. And then you start putting them on the timeline. So let's go back to this now. So here we got some clips on the timeline and you'll see some of these like, um, well, like that clip there has got audio on it and you can see, and I, I can't point or pinch, but you see the where the playhead is. Um, there is a, there's a little waveform on there. So that's that sound of the coffee thing, you know, grinding away. There you go. So you can hear that audio there. And the music in the background is there, but it's super, super quiet. So this is one of those really annoying things about iMovie and why I got frustrated with it. iMovie has this auto ducking feature, which if you're, I guess if you don't know anything about video, it can be very handy to put your clip on there that has audio, throw music on, and the background music automatically ducks below the level of of the um, the ambient audio, uh, the, the NAT sound, or we know what's on the clip, so that you can hear both. 
thing is you can't turn that off. And that was driving me crazy because in here I wanted the music at full volume, but then just to hear the background of the coffee grinder a little bit quietly. When I get into people talking, then I want it to duck down, but you can't control that. A little frustrating. Also in iMovie, when you add clips, it automatically puts a transition between them. And the most basic default theme, it puts a stupid cross dissolve between it. Do I really want every shot to have a cross dissolve between it? No, that is the answer. So every single shot, I have to go in and change it, set it to cut, set it to cut, set it to cut. Super tedious and annoying. But let's face it, it is dead easy to edit in here. You simple titler, throw your stuff together and hit export. But here's one of the things that I ran into that surprised me. So I brought in, as I said, 4K 60p. Edit it in here. There's no indication in iMovie of what resolution, what frame rate you're at. I exported from iMovie to YouTube and the video on YouTube was 4K, but only 30p. What's that all about? So then I came back into the studio and one of the really cool things about editing an iMovie on the iPad is that you can take that iMovie project from your iPad, copy it over to your desktop, open it into iMovie on the desktop, and then from there, send it to Final Cut. So if you're a Final Cut editor, you can start on the iPad and finish on Final Cut. So that is crazy, crazy cool. So I get it in there and I see, okay, it's set to 4K 30p, but the media was all 4K 60, so it's not like it transcoded it. It's just that iMovie only did 4K 30. Dang, that's, that's annoying. I really want that full 60p experience. And I'm already frustrated with some of the editing things. So I dug around a little bit, posted some stuff on Facebook, and I found out that there are some other editing tools out there that I wasn't even aware of. One of the apps that I found was called Pinnacle Pro. Now, Pinnacle Pro looked really promising, and I paid the 13 bucks or something for it, downloaded it, and as soon as it opened, there's a little tutorial button. I hit the tutorial button. It says, this product is no longer development or supported, but we're providing these videos just for your entertainment and you know to learn. I'm going... Really? I just bought a discontinued product? Lame. So I dug around a little bit more, and as far as I can tell, it's kind of weird, but as far as I can tell, the company that makes that software, Pinnacle Pro, sold it to Corel, who's distributing an old app. But then the folks that make Pinnacle developed a whole new version of the app called LumaFusion. And this is currently in active development. It's fairly new, but man, this thing is powerful. So that's what I'm gonna show you very briefly here. I wanna show you Pinnacle Fusion, just to show you some of the cool things on here. Um, let's see here, you get full metadata on your clips. Here you see it shows um, timing, 21 seconds at 59.94. So that is a 59.94 project. Beautiful. The project itself, I can set to what frame rate I want. Boom, 60. I don't know why it doesn't say 59.94, but it is. That's your 60p. I can do very precise editing on here. It does not have a trim tool that lets you go frame by frame, but it's coming, apparently. I got a, for now, what you can do is triple tap on the screen and it zooms into frame level. So you can trim frame by frame. The previous app that was discontinued had a frame by frame editor. Really, really cool. Um, plus, because one of the things I've been missing is this whole export, apparently they are already testing EDL export out of here. So you could do an edit on here. And if you really did want to take this into Final Cut and finish it, you could export an EDL and that's coming apparently. That's insanely cool. This also has, let's see here. There we go. Check out all the audio individual tracks. You can change the audio levels on. You get full audio level meters in here. You can have, it's three tracks of video, three tracks of audio. It's insane. And this is all on a stinking iPad. It's really, really remarkable. So I am crazy impressed with this app. This one is 20 bucks on the App Store. I mean, $20 for an editor like this is crazy bargain. It is incredibly, incredibly robust and powerful. Um, I'm super impressed. So if you wanna do editing, with your GH5, I mean, talk about a ultra portable package, right? Every, I mean, that's incredible. And because it does the 60p, you can output 60p to YouTube from here. It has a robust titler in it, has color grading in it. It's incredible. It's, I, I, wow. So check that out. I'll put the link down below again. I'll look for you guys later. All right, that's what I wanted to show you today. Watch the full video that I showed you a little bit of. Uh, it's not, you know, remarkable filmmanship or anything like that, but it, it's cool because it's shot like in the dark and the sun never came up. So it's not exactly pretty, but you know, whatever, go check it out. Tomorrow is the VFR demo because people were asking how to get into VFR slow motion mode on the camera. So we're going to take a look at that. Take care guys. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.